I don't know if the Lord knows about Murphy's Law, but it seems like today Paul wasn't here and with the new system and there's people from Kentucky who had called. It wasn't working, but it seems to be working here and it's been busy lately. Well, last week the same way. And uh, and again, last week we had uh, two couples that were here and... Uh, one of the couple was from Arkans, Arkansas, Arkansas, sorry, and come to talk to him after after the service. He was a preacher, so who knew? You never know who comes in from time to time, but the Lord knows all about these things. Again, remember Brother Neil and Sister Bernice at this time, in their time of need, and let's look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we come at this time of this service, we thank you, Lord, for your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your word in this hour. Lord, use this vessel of clay as you would see fit this morning in whatever you would have. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Yeah, this week we put uh, my mother in the ground and then May's stepfather passed away and it's one thing after the other. But life goes on. It's, it's times we have to go through, and, and the Lord knows all about these things to begin with. This message here this morning may be, it's not for the novice, but I feel it's kind of important in, in a way that knowing what's up the road, and if I was to title it, what is the order of the seventh seal time factor? There are some things that took place in the days of Brother Branham, in 1963, when he preached the seals, it was meant for the Bride of Jesus Christ, wasn't it? And back then, they didn't have the technology that we have here today. But although he is the voice of that seventh messenger, God still wanted it recorded. And when we look back, we think it's ancient times that they were using telephone hookups to hear a message. People was hungry. Then they taped his sermons as well. There's not much video that in the days of Brother Branham that was taken. But in those days, although those six seals were for the bride of Jesus Christ, the bride herself is not the only one that heard it. The cold denominational church wasn't interested but the people that God drew through the net, they had an opportunity to hear it. And if we, I'm going to use that this morning as a springboard. Yes, six seals were for the bride. Who heard it? Believers as well as tares heard it. Now, when you say that, then people get a little nervous, defensive. Or if you want to call them intellectual believers. That God had it recorded. It was it not handed down. Back then, yes, the world didn't realize the importance of those seals. 
the reason that sixth seal was opened was to initiate the bride of Jesus Christ to move into a revelatory room to be dressed with a revelation that she was to put on. And sometimes just human mankind thinks, well, Lord, why did you just go one, two, three, four, five, six? Why not proceed to the seventh one right off the bat? Because as you read it in chapter 4 to chapter 5, he picks up the book and he's going to be opening the seals. And as he opens the seal, it seems like it would all be done all at and the same event and same time. But God, is, in his wisdom, knew that he needed to prepare a bride. Because in 1963, she was nowhere near what God wanted to instill into a bride. And to instill into a bride... What did happen from 63 even to the fivefold ministry supposedly be on the ground now? Why did God has held off that seventh seal? Can we see the reason why it taken so long? It has to do from 63 till the time Jesus comes off that mercy seat. That's where the bride is receiving sevenfold more light. That's where it's happened, from 63 onward. Not because we're more intelligent than the early church, but it is God's doing that he brought, he's brought this about, but he had to take, and it's been 65 years. How long will this go till God brings, yes, the final revelation in the book, in, this, in the Bible, is opened up to the bride? All right. Now... So from 63, it would take all that period of time to uh, bring to the place. Uh, maybe somebody can look and put the air conditioner, because am I the only one being hot here? They could uh, put those on. i put it around number 26. Yeah. If you think it's hot down there, it's hotter up here, because you're... Well, two ways, I guess. <laughs> and so we're going to be looking here. Uh, the reason I've used what happened in the days of Brother Branham. When we get to that seventh seal. There's more than just the seventh seal being opened and some thunders being preached. There's a whole lot of things that happens in that half hour time silence. There are a certain sequence to it as well. And so, this morning, as we would look at it, now this here, this not happening in time, I just portraying it, he's pointing to the point where that angel is going to be coming down when that seventh seal is actually broke. And the breaking of that seventh seal is found in Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. And in that eighth chapter... And when he had opened the seventh seal, which we believe is not too far down the road, there was a silence in heaven for about a half hour. The physical silence of the saints in heaven will be, now it depends how fast time passes in heaven. I don't know if you can see the clock. Anyway, there's one back there anyway. It may be around half an hour time here on earth. As far as it being silence in the glory, as far as the people sitting there. That's one way to look at things. 
But we know that silence doesn't last long because everyone in heaven is going to be screaming, he's worthy to receive that book and to open it, the seal, the scroll. So the silence is more than just uh, a 30 minute affair. But it is a dual function in one sense. The silence in heaven has to do with Jesus that's been sitting on that mercy seat. No more revelation is coming from the mercy seat point of view. Because when that seventh seal is broken, as far as what we are going to receive here on earth, it's not coming from the mercy seat. It will be coming through that angel that has been dispatched to you and I of any information and revelation that we are to understand. I know I presented one time that how that that half hour it says here when he had opened the seventh seal in heaven it was about a, now the reason it says about a half hour it's twofold it's not meant trying to figure it out but it gives a, an approximate when that thing's going to be and if we look at concerning how in the book of Revelation, in chapter Revelation chapter 17, how that the kings, the ten horns, will, be, will reign with the beast, one hour with the beast. One hour, we know what that is. That's seven, uh, seven years. But when we come to the silence, if we're looking in the same terminology now, that silence, it says it's about, so you can't figure it out. It's not going to be two days, and it's not going to be ten years. It's in the relative frame of three and a half years. It's about. Now, having all that said that, and that makes people leery when I talk about the half hour silence in the term of the time frame. Or if you want to, to be more at ease, it's the seventh seal time factor. And what's involved in it. Alright? So when we look at the chapter 8... This, the uh, seven seals been opened. What do you see in heaven? What's the next thing that takes place? And I saw the seven angels that stood before the Lord, and seven trumpets was given seven trumpets. These trumpets, as has been revealed to us by Brother Brown and Brother Jackson, it's to the nation of Israel for the week of Daniel. But the next verse is pertaining to us. And another angel came and stood on the altar having a golden censer and was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all. That was a key thing that God has opened up in the last few years. Of all the saints. Now some say you could look at, well it's all the saints in that half hour silence. No. Or the seventh seal factor. No. Because there's prayers in the book of Revelation where the elders, the 24 elders, the beasts are holding the prayers in the bowl and they were never offered. So the, those prayers that were never offered are held in those bowls till the time this angel comes. And this angel that coming and has the, the, gold, has the golden censer, that angel here, He's going to mark the end of the seventh seal time factor. Because when there's no more prayers to be prayed, it sh we should dawn and understand that is completed. So when he offers all the prayers, then Jesus is going to come for the living saints. They're going to be changing and twinkling of an eye. And the dead in Christ is going to rise first, get their bodies as well. So that sets the boundary over here at the end boundary so Revelation chapter 8 tells you when it starts and by what the angel does it shows you that it is the end of that seventh seal time factor and a lot of information as God has brought it to our understanding oh well, yeah we read it, it's, it's an angel offered all the prayers it's more than just that if we knew what God has been restoring that angel is not Jesus Christ. Because he is a high priest. He's where? The altar before God. In heaven. 
offering the prayers of all humanity. It's not just a guardian angel or a, or, or a simple ministering angel. He has a specific function. And there's only one angel that was used as a high priest that was Melchizedek. He was Melchizedek was the priest of the Most High God. God used him. God spoke through him. Just like he spoke through his son. But that don't make uh, that angel Melchizedek God himself. But now as we look at that part where it is that angel. Why is not Jesus doing this? Now you that may be listening on the internet. In that half hour time silence there are going to be seven, seven thunders going to sound. Why ain't Jesus down here doing it? Why is he sending an angel? Why don't he at the very end be the one that would be fitting to offer all the prayers? Because he's busy doing another function. That's the reason. We're going to get into it now. Now let's turn to the book of Revelation chapter 10. It talks about here in that 10th chapter. I saw a mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was about his head, and his face was as it was the sun, and his feet as a pillar of fire. He's robed with the authority of God, Jehovah himself, as well as Jesus Christ. And an angel can speak on behalf of Jesus Christ, because angels have done it before, Look at Paul when he was on the road to Damascus. And Paul, and he says, Paul, it's hard for you to kick in the pricks. And he says, who art thou? He says, I am Jesus. Now, it was not Jesus, it was an angelic being. Now you say, well, uh, I don't see that. Well, I read the, keep going in the book of Acts to, to Acts chapter 26, and you see Paul said it was a vision brought by by an angel. So, this angel is going to speak on behalf of Jesus Christ that's coming down. And he had in his hand a little book open. The book open, where did the book get open? In glory. The book had to be open before the angel came. How many follow? And when that book needed to be open, since he had a little book open in his hand, he said his right foot upon the seas and his left foot upon the earth he has it's universal so whatever that angel is going to do is going to have to be expounded universally you are now that seven seal has been broken no more going to be added to the bride or the white robes at that point in time because Jesus is off that mercy seat. All right. And he, verse 3. Now watch. And he cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth, and when he crieth, seven thunders other their voices. Now I know the Branham people believe that Brother Branham is going to be saying those seven voices. No, it's seven men. In this time frame, that's going to be sounding those thunders. So the order of event is, that angel comes, as we see in the book of Revelation, and he cries with a loud voice. His voice is louder than the seven thunder voices. What would make it loud? What does it mean to be a loud voice? Hmm? It will be louder than what those seven thunders are going to be saying. Well, first of all, that angel, through that angel, through the, his vision, it's Jesus Christ revealing himself to the living element here on earth. We will not see the literal Jesus Christ, but that angel can manifest is speaking on behalf of Jesus Christ here on earth. He's, his, that voice is going to be 
trigger those seven thunder voices as well. But to make the voice loud, it's not just he introduces himself, but he's also going to be introducing that voice. I'm coming here to judge the living element. And if you don't think that will resound loud, people are going to get nervous that are having been following the Lord. That's just like this, those six seals, what it did to the religious world. That was one vo loud voice from the Lord. Now here's the Lord, he's, cry he's using that angel to cry it. And when he does cry it, yes, it will be introducing Jesus Christ to you and I. Will we actually see him in a vision? We don't know because we don't, we're, we'll have to wait for that time frame. But he's going to, he's going to initiate, there's going to be seven thunders. Then that seven thunders will know when they are going to start. Because if we don't see how he's crying, you will never know when the seven thunders do start. So the angel cries first. And that voice is a message, an understanding that's going to be loud to shake at that time. All right. Now as those seven thunders are going through, as I used the days of Brother Branham when the seals were, six seals were being preached, we've been taught that there's going to be no tears when those seven seals is broke. Right? Was there any tears when those six seals were broke? Now, you can only go so far. I'm not going to go too far. I'm using that as an example. Let's say those seven thunders are beginning to sound. We, the angel has introduced himself, brought what he has to say. Yes, he will bring forth. Here, I'll, I'll put it this way here. He'll bring forth a vision of Brother Brown and Brother Jackson so it won't be without a shadow of a doubt to the true believers that the seventh seal is broke. Now, Brother Branham and Brother Jackson is going to be a vision. They're, he's, they're not raised from the dead. They get their portion of the near body when the dead in Christ shall ri rise first and we alive remain going to be changed at that hour. So as that is being projected, And the seven thunders are being, are going to begin to sound within that time frame. And that's going to take, let's say, a year, two years for it to unfold through the whole bride. Is it just going to be in one place, hearing it? And then he travels to the next place, secretly? Every... Important sermons are being broadcast on the internet, aren't they? Yes, yes there will be assemblies where there's just true seeds there. But by the connection of the way of the internet, the tares can also hear like they did in the days of Brother Branham. This is all pointing to something else. The only difference is, if they haven't been following the revelation of the Lord, then they're going to hear it, but they won't be ready to receive what God is doing in the hour in that seventh sealed time factor. Oh, well, I never thought about that. First of all, when you look at the time frame, you have just come through his, the war of Ezekiel 38 and 39. The world will have thought that they came to the Armageddon. Driving is limited. But the internet will still work. And so therefore I can see God will use some means to have, yes, the internet to be broadcast where some saints are receiving it. 
but there will be seven men being used where the internet does not go. So God's not going to leave no one out because you don't have them to have you don't happen to have the internet. Because it has a purpose why they need to hear it. The tares. Or the unbeliever, or the intellectual believers. As the, those thunders are, are unfolding, in those thunders will be some information on what? On the preparing the bride to leave here. And it wouldn't be, wouldn't it be nice to know when Jesus is going to judge you and I, the living element, what our reward's going to be? I leave it to chance whenever, well, we don't know if it's going to be at the end or in the rapture or in, up in glory at the wedding supper. No, it's not left to chance. So somewhere's in now, we don't know what the seven seal, the seven thunders are going to say. But somewhere something has to be communicated to that bride. She's going to know where she's at. And she's going to be really storming heaven with prayers because the last prayer has not been prayed yet. And as we are praying, I'll guarantee you there won't be anybody missing any services then. If it is, it's either you're sick or you have a lazy attitude. You just won't fit into the picture. In that half hour silence. I just want to say that. The importance is there. Because what is their seven thunders going to say something very important. Now. Let's look this morning. As those thunders just has been opened up. In that time of that half hour silence. It's going to be, Jesus is going to be judging the dead and the quick. Now I have to back up back to the beginning of that seventh seal time factor. Because there's two scriptures that are important that's going to show what's transpiring. And I know the Jackson movement, just take, well, we'll just throw that to the side. We don't really need that. Well, time's going to tell what you're going to need. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, Jesus Jesus is opening that seventh seal. This all, it shows here he has the right to open the, all the seals. But we know that six of them was opened in 63. But then there's going to be a time when he opens the seventh one. And the bride, that seventh seal can't be broken before the bride comes to the full biblical, what God wanted to have the bride to have sevenfold light. So as we are now in, in Revelation chapter 5 verse 9, it says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to open the seals. Where is that taking place? In heaven. That's where Jesus opens the seals. Thereof, for thou wast slain, because that's why he's worthy to open it, and has redeemed us as to God, and by thy blood, and out of every kindred, tongues, people, and nations. And thou hast made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. It's showing the end results, what he's going to be doing, what, how we're going to be in the millennium. But then when we get to verse 11, you're still in glory. The angel of Revelation 10, chapter 10 has not been dispatched yet. Time-wise, you're still in glory. And it, because the reason I say that, because Luke chapter 19 is going to pinpoint that when 
verse 11 and verse 12 is still in glory before the angel comes. In verse 11 it says, And I beheld, and I heard the voices of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the numbers of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, ten thousands of thousands. A great multitude up there. And they were saying with a loud voice, when you get a crowd that big and saying, they're saying something, it's going to be loud. And you won't have to worry about it bursting your ears. They're all in heaven, have glorified bodies. Or angels or, or the bride. Or those that are in heaven. Saying with a loud voice, worship the Lamb that was slain. To receive, or going to receive. He is given... The, his authority that he's going to have, he's going to receive what? He's going to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, and honor, glory, and blessing. That's what he's receiving right here. It's still in glory. What's the power for? The millennium rule. What's the blessing? Is the blessing is being incorporated in the millennium rule? What are the riches? Is the rule with Christ in, the, in there? The glory as well. The wisdom. What is the wisdom he's going to possess? Jesus is going to possess. He had wisdom when he was on earth. When they attacked him and says, well, who should we give this coin to? The Caesar or to God? That was a wisdom part for his his priestly or his, sorry, his prophetic realm. But this wisdom here is the wisdom he's, he's going to receive. In other words, he's going to receive, receive something. means he's going to have more. But this wisdom is like the wisdom of Solomon to rule the millennium with. Honor and might. He's going to have might to rule the millennium. Who gives it to him? The Father that is in him. So this is all taking place now. Revelation chapter 5, uh, chapter 5 verse 9, and chapter 5 verse 12, it's all happening in glory. Now, where do we put this emphasis, where do we hear about it again? And if we want to turn to Luke, the 19th chapter... Luke chapter 19 from verse 12 down to verse 26. It's point to you at the end time. Verse 12, showing he's coming at the end of the age. He's going to deliver meat or occupy or give pounds, which is revelation, which he's been doing from 63 till the time that seventh seal is broke. And he says, occupying those things that he's delivering in. He's putting importance on the sevenfold light for the bride because she's the one to be dressed with it. Because the early church, even up to 1963, was not dressed with the sevenfold light. But God will honor them and those who are in the bride has their part for what they were for their hour of time. But now when we arrive to verse... 15. In verse 12, he comes in a message. But in verse 15, he's not coming in a message. He doesn't have two comings here at the end. It came to pass when he was returned. That's your angel. Now a revelation, chapter 10, he's on ground. That's who's there. That's who, when he says... And when it came to pass, when he was returned, having received, that means past tense, he received it, that angel received the understanding of what Jesus was to have in glory before that angel is ever dispatched to the earth. So that's why he could say, having received the kingdom, the authority for the kingdom. Because that's what Revelation chapter 5 verse 12 talks about. Now he's here on earth. And while he's on earth, he says, then, at that time, there, he said, bring these servants, 
that he's going to judge them on their reward, not their salvation. So there's the judgment seat of Christ. That's going to be transpiring here in this part here. But that angel has all that information of Revelation chapter 10, that when he comes, he's going to introduce Christ. He's going to bring that vision of Brother Branham and Brother Jackson to you and I, so we will know who the seven thunders are. That has to unfold first, as that angel moves in that direction. But when those thunders has done their work, now the judgment begins of the bride saints that are on the earth. The why that angel's down here doing it? Because Jesus is in glory judging the bride saints that are deceased, which are in the millions. And that's why he can't come down. He sends that angel right here. So while Jesus is busy doing that up there, that angelic being of Revelation chapter 10, now is going to be performing that part concerning the rewards of of the wicked, oh, sorry, of, of the of the bride, the quick. Now something, and I know you've heard this before, but what I just mentioned a while ago, how in the days of Brother Branham, yes, the six seals was for the bride, but the tares heard it too. But there was a separation going to be starting, because that was the beginning of it. When those seven thunders sound, it is for the bride as well. But the tares are going to hear it as well. Because now if you want to, we're in Luke. If you want to turn back to Luke chapter 13. Now this part of the scripture becomes more relevant that will be on ground at that hour. And because the intellectual that tares will hear what the thunders are going to be saying, they don't believe it or can't accept it because what has been brought up to that hour, they couldn't see. Now, here's what happens. He says, when once the master of the house is risen. When is the master of the house risen? And risen from what? Who's the master of the house? The Lord Jesus Christ. When he's risen from the mercy seat. Because what's going to unfold after is talking about what happens when that seventh seal is broke. And when the master of the house is risen and shut the door. Shut the door to all revelation except for the bride. And you begin to sound, you begin to stand without, and knock at the door, the door of revelation. What's in that seventh seal time factor? And saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Now we want to understand. Because they see, because of the means of that angel putting on display, they'll probably see the vision of Brother Branham and Brother Jackson. But they have not been with the true bride and been on the outskirts of it. And as the master is now is risen up, he points you, you're in that seventh seal time factor. Lord, Lord, I'll put unto us, and he shall answer, I know you not from whence you are. Then will ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunken in thy presence. Where's that? Where the bride was at. And thou hast taught in our streets. They heard truth that was being taught in their streets. But they didn't all want to believe everything. Enough to be part of, pretending to be part of the bride. But I'll say, but he shall say, I tell you not, I tell you, I know you not from whence you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Why does he call them iniquity? Because they reject his word. Not because they were sinning, going to the beer parlor and all those things. They were iniquity because they would take God's word and say it's of the... Well, they don't say it's of the devil. We, we think it's a false revelation. That's what that crowd says. Now, at the same time, 
It's also found in, well, I don't have to turn to it, in, in Matthew, in, uh, along with what Luke says, it's in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, and that you can read on your own. But let's turn to Matthew chapter 25 now. Verse 12. Verse 11. And afterward came the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Here's another group saying, Lord, open up to us. But he shall answer and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. That's your foolish virgin. So what's going to affect the foolish virgin and the intellectual or the tares believers? When those seven thunders are going to be sounded, God's not going to put the bride in a cubicle with soundproof room that nothing gets out of the room. To the bride it's herself, she will hear those thunders. And she'll know with what she has received that would be important to prepare her for the what's just immediately going to follow. But to the others, they heard it by the way of the internet. Or it could be a tape or video. And when they see that God is not with them, they'll say, Lord, open unto us. At what time does, do they say that? It's when the master has risen up from where he's at. In other words, he's changed position. That's when Jesus comes off that mercy seat and he's risen up because in that seventh seal is the time that where he's going to come and take his bride, which all these things unfold. As I'm trying to, it's kind of a complex, but those have been, I mean, if simple people can receive it, how come preacher can't? So now, at this point here, when by those things that are going to be demonstrated on the ground by that angelic being and the seven thunders saying what they're going to say, nobody's going to question well, we, we don't know if it's false, if it's true or not. There'll be something so dynamic, they'll know whether they've been walking with the Lord or not at that point in time. And as we arrive to that point, the bride, when does she receive her crown? If you read those scriptures here, and I believe it's in First Peter chapter 5, 4. It says, when he appears, Jesus appears, we're going to receive a crown of life. What does that mean? You have eternal life before he appears. You're his child to begin with. That crown is for ruling. Not just, it's, yes, it's life, but it's life in the terms of ruling. So he will, there's a crown when he appears. When he's, Jesus is going to actually appear to do that. When he comes physically in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when the Lord does come, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we are alive and remaining. That's when you and I get our crown. And what is the crown? It's symbolic, yes, of a rulership, yes, for life, but it's also rulership. But it also entails when you get your resurrected bodies. So the resurrection, the wedding takes place as we meet him in the air and that everybody's there. He's not going to have the wedding and supper with just the deceased bride saints and the living down here. It's all, the bride is all uniform as what he's taken out through the whole grace age. All right. Now I want to go down to the book of Revelation again. Chapter 10. I have to bring this to a close. 
Probably I have to touch this more than once. Now, when we arrive to verse 6, and it says here, And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea, lift up his hands towards heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created all things therein, and the earth, and the things that are therein, that are, and the seas, and the things that are therein, that there should be time no longer, no de more delay. Delay for what? Delay for the judgment of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ. No delay for our rapture, our being changed. And before there can be no longer no delay, every revelation will have to have been brought that's in this book, right for the whole bride to carry. Now, now there it says time no longer. Most transition gives it that there should be no more delay. So when does that angel lift up his both hands and says here, there's no more time delay? I can see that when after those seven thunders are finished, he said, now there's no more delay. The bride has got her personal instruction. Now there's no more delay to finish this off. To finish that seventh seal, to bring the bride home and to turn to the Jews. But in the time frame, that should be the time when the bride is going now, is going to go through that judgment seat of Christ. We must all appear there. No, we're not going to, us, the living element on earth, is not going to appear in heaven to do that. That's why the angel doing it down here. It has to be that angel. According to Second Th Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, that when Jesus does come, and Paul didn't say, well, Timothy, if you want to take note, he says, I charge thee, Timothy, by the Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, the living element, and the dead. At his appearing, not at his wedding supper. Do you get it? Well, we don't know it's up there it's because Brother Brown and Brother Jackson said it's in glory. Yes, it is in glory for those that are there. The little Lord Jesus Christ is going to be doing that. But when he says he's going to judge the quick and the dead, that's you and I, and that's transpiring down here through via the angel speaking on the behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why how the scripture is so beautiful. When that angel comes, he has one foot on the land and one foot on the sea. Well, do I have to travel to Moncton? Do I have to travel to, to Jeffersonville? No. He will go where you are, every saint is at. Can you see? I mean, something has to make sense, spiritual sense, and common sense as well. If in the days of Brother Branham, those six seals was for the bride, how come the tares heard it and the intellectuals? And now, when that seventh seal is broke, yes, the, only the brides are going to hear it. And there will be places where the assembly, that's all there will be, will be bride saints. But because the, the voice can, and whatever's taking place can be broadcasted, that terror element will hear, the, will hear the same thing. Just like it did in the days of Brother Branham. Now that brings into Luke chapter 13 into focus when the Master is risen up. That is not played for all ages. Yes, there's going to be things that how men, is, as they come before the Lord, or when they die, what's going to take place. But here in, in Luke chapter 13, when the Master is risen up, how did they know to ask the Lord open up to us now? How did the foolish get to know how to open up to us now? Because remember, you just come out of a major war 
that was on the planet in Ezekiel 38 and 39. That war will get the foolishest attention. And by God now allowing it to be broadcasted, that's how the foolish version is going to hear and say, Lord, open unto us now. Yes, there are foolish virgins that from time to time they come and say, they come looking to see what's, what's in, what's in the, your meetings or what's taking place there. Yes, that fills a certain requirement. But somewhere there comes a, how can I put it, a completion of it somewhere. And from that point on, the foolish virgin is going to know and the tares are going to know because God has done something dynamic in that seven seal time factor. They'll know where they stand. The bride will know where she stands. And that hour is not that far away from us. Like I was telling, talking to a brother. If we're wrong on Matthew chapter 24, 32, then the preachers that are in this generation is going to be all gone and we'll have to revive what, some of that revelation. And I don't see no young generation of preachers rising up amongst the ranks. Yes, there's young preachers in the denominational world. I met a few when, when I first started out. They know everything. They know exactly what needs to be done and so forth. You couldn't teach them anything. I was just wasting my time. And there comes a time you say, well, you have to let it go. And just walk on. Didn't know better back then, way back in 74, when it first came in, 75. He only knew a little bit. <laughs> but thank be to God, it's what he has given. No preacher can claim any revelation. Unless the Lord Jesus Christ puts it down on ground, then a preacher can do his best trying to, well, I can put this together and there and then here and there. That's all well and fine. It may sound good to people, but unless it's a true revelation, then that true revelation will stand. And like I was listening to sermons of Brother Branham. You can spot, now that he's said what I've heard, you can spot it everywhere. It's when they only play with, well they know exactly what God done in the past and they can preach those things real easy. And what, they, what was shown to them of the future, they preach about that. But God has a very terrible time of showing them their day. And it, is that from the, actually from, even from the Old Testament coming down through, it's been that way. Lord have mercy. Well that's, that's God's doing. If you want to. He's allowing those things to take place in that manner. Now the thought escaped me, but I want to bring in something else as well. But can you see the picture this morning? Don't think we're going to be in that seventh seal, like in a bubble. Nobody knows what's going to happen in that bubble. That won't be any more secretively than it was when the seals were brought. God's allowing that because that's what brings Luke chapter 13 to the forefront. Because it's all happening at the same time. Right here in that seven seal time factor. Oh, how wonderful God's word is. Do you find this complicated this morning? Do you have to go to school in Sunday school? We have to go teaching a whole lot of things. You don't need to know every detail, but when a picture is formed, then the Holy Ghost will break. Take the words that's spoken and bring it out. Now I remember what I want to talk about. It's like in the days of Peter and Paul. When Gamaliel says, 
that concerning the things that Paul and them were preaching and Peter was preaching. He said, "If it's not a God, it'll fall to the ground. It'll fall, fail. But if it's of God, watch out." What I'm saying this morning. Thus far, I have to thank the Lord that I heard, not, heard nothing of a pit. Now I heard in innuendos and comments, but I haven't seen anyone take the scripture and point the picture that what we're looking at is false. Be it God that has allowed us to see this, then it will stand. Do I know everything? No. But if by His grace and mercy, God has to use somebody, somehow, some way, to bring this picture, a picture to the end for that seventh seal. There's more than just, well, the seventh seal is broken, seven thunders take place, and then we're going home. That's why other scriptures all pile into what we're talking about this morning. And if the Lord is starting to allow us to see this, then I have to say it's not that far off the road. Because when we see that miracle war, the temple being put in place, the Ezekiel war, somewhere in that time frame, that's when that seventh seal is going to be broke as we've been instructed. Are you ready? Are we being complacent, nonchalant, having that lukewarm about God's Word and meeting together? You don't have to answer to me. The one that's looking at you is the one that's from heaven. And the Lord God Himself sees everything. He knows every thought. I'm glad He doesn't blabber it all over the place. Do you? Only God knows the secrets of the heart. Satan does not know it. He can throw a dart and try to guess what you're, where you're going at and where you're going. But Satan, unless you speak it, then he will hear it. But I'm thankful that the Lord only knows the secrets of our heart. That's why there's nothing hid from him. Well... Somewhere, something's going to, all of a sudden, like 9-11, something's going to transpire. And we're going to be in a different mode. Yes, things get more desperate. But I believe the nine spiritual gifts, I'm waiting for that. Lord, <laughs> set my feet a-dancing. I don't know how to dance and I'm 71, but... If the Holy Ghost ever does it, don't worry about it. You will dance. Speaking in tongues is fine, but I believe prophecy is much needed. Healing is really needed. Miracles. Now it's not going to be a display like the 50s, but it will be a witness to this bride. The Lord is still the same. He still heals, He still works. But when he brings the bride to her completed period of time, to her perfection stage, I believe to see those gifts in operation.